of going through the ball. Oh, right? it's just so long gorgeous, ball. gorgeous. It's wonderful. Going right at the, tar at the target with my blade square. Watch this. Oh. You went at that one a little harder, didn't you? Sure. Look. What did you do to hit that ball the extra 20 yards? Tur turn my body. Turn my shoulders and my body. Here, here's again. What's going on with your hands in the swing? I mean, is anything going on, or is these? Not too much. Arm, arms and shoulders more. Hands I don't even know, or wrists don't even know. No. But arms and shoulders. What about the women? Arms and shoulders. Yeah. That's what the world's missing out on. Mm -hmm. This is crazy. How do these? Watch this. Like, don't even know these are there. Mm -hmm. Just here, 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 here to here to here. So what does it feel like when you hit a golf ball? When you when you're at impact, what's the feeling you get in your body? Oh, sensational. Yeah. Everything light. Everything's light. As if I just lost 20 pounds. I lost 20 pounds. There's nothing in my way. My body can enjoy every position I put it in. My body can enjoy it. It's a physical sensation. Oh, is it ever? And an emotion. Oh, yeah. It's wonderful. It's just wonderful. All right, so welcome to the next part of this video series, which I'm building your single plane swing for 2020. And I'm walking you through the process that I use in my golf schools. Look, we teach thousands of people a year the single plane swing, and we have a model. And that's what this channel is dedicated to. And by the way, if you want to learn more about the single plane swing and, and all the things that related to Mo Norman, please subscribe to the channel. I don't want you to miss out on any of the stuff that I'm teaching here because we have a process of teaching. And if you follow the process, you're going to get better but it is a process and it also, you can't just pick up little bits and pieces. They might help you, but it's not gonna give you a long-term solution because when I started this series, my goal was to help you have a 365 day a year swing. I wanna solve the golf swing equation for you so you can play golf for the rest of your life and have fun. I don't want you to need me anymore or need instruction even though you know I, I love to practice and I love instruction, you can always get better, but please, we wanna build you a, a great golf swing for the rest of your life. And you can, if you follow the model here, you can do that. So in the last video, we went through how we're, we transition into impact. I'm gonna go through that again, the transition to impact part here. And as I do that, we're gonna talk about how we release. Now remember that every, the swing is a sum of the parts, which means how we move in a golf swing is related to the previous section. So when you see people release a golf club on this side, what happens over here a lot of times is related to what happened over here. For example, if I come over the top this way, the club goes that way, right? If I tilt too much this way, the club goes that way. So the swing is a function of what's happening on both sides. So if we've got this down really good, we're going to get this down really good. So remember when we transition to impact. And uh, just as a reference and a note here, these training aids that I use are, are the ones, these are our basic training tools. I have a club here that I've created that has a, a grip that helps you get the proper lead hand position and trail hand position for the single plane swing. So I have a proper, it has actually some markings on here to help you get the proper spacing. I don't want to go through everything with the training aids. That, you can find that on my website. But all this stuff is designed for the single plane swing. I have the training club here. I have a leverage bag to help you work on your leverage position into impact and I have an alignment trainer down here to work on alignment and ball position. I spend, I do a lot of this type of training because as you saw in the very first video in this series, what did we talk about? We talked about working in the proper order and that if you don't get one thing right, you can't get the next. If, the, if your address position isn't correct, you're not gonna get the backswing. If the backswing isn't correct, you're not gonna get transition. If transition isn't correct, you're not gonna get downswing and impact. If impact's correct, you're sure the heck not gonna release it. And on that same note, I had a student a couple days ago 
and he was having trouble releasing. And the reason he was having trouble releasing was because we had fixed his downswing. I know that sounds weird, right? But what happened was he had trouble with his downswing for a long period of time. We, got it, we finally got it right. He worked through it and got it right. But he had never learned to release it from a correct swing. So in other words, his release position, how his hands worked, was related, that whole thing was related to his old golf swing. So we had, to, we had to reteach him how to release the golf club from a proper downswing. So that's how this thing works. If you relearn this part, you gotta relearn that, relearn that part. It only makes sense, right? That's why I teach this way, because I'm not a quick fix guy, I'm a process guy. I want the proper process and make it simple for you. So let me just go through transition impact, and then I'll move the bag, and then we'll do release. So here we go. So here we are at address. Now, Go back and review address. You can't do this enough. Perfect your address position. I'm going to go to the top. I'm going to transition into that knee. That's, that's, that's the weight moving from the inside of the leg into that lead knee. Then I'm going to start rotating down. And now watch what happens here, okay? So watch what's happening. As I go into impact and I reach this impact position, I'm rotated. I'm almost stuck. I, I, my trail arm is bent. I usually keep it pretty close to my body when I'm hitting the bag. And now, Notice how my trail arm is bent and my lead arm is straight. Okay, so keep, keep this position in mind for just one second, all right? I'm gonna move the bag. And now I'm gonna hold myself into that exact position, okay? So there's the position I was in. Trail arm is bent and lead arm is straight. Now watch what happens from here. Because you've seen me in, in some of these videos on my channel, I talk about how the lead side of the body is actually slowing down and it's breaking. I'm not gonna say it's completely stopping, but there's times when it does completely stop. But there's a sequence of events occurring starting from here, moving up to here, moving to here, and then to here. So we have this sequence of events happening, which is the proper delivery of the club with speed into impact. But as I walk you through this sequence of events, and I'm gonna go through it here. As I walk you through the sequence of events, I want you to notice that this trail side still has, as this side is slowing down, as the lead side is breaking, this trail side is not. This side of my body is not. And it has the ability to, to release, in, in other words, extend and produce speed. So just because this side of the body is stopping doesn't mean this side has to, right? And this is where I think a lot of golf instruction is confused because when people say rotate, rotate is, is a, a very confusing term because, because watch this. So I, I can hold this still, this arm still, and I can rotate the trail side of my body. See that? I can, I can rotate this side of my body. With this, out, with, that, with that that's moving. So rotation can pivot around this side of my body. See that? It's not just a pure rotation like this. It's a pivot around that side of my body. So rotation is occurring, but it's like this is, moving, this is moving around this as opposed to purely moving around in a circle. So let's do that as we release the golf club. So here we go to impact again. There's impact. Notice how my lead side, starting from here, because my lead knee was flexed, my foot was rotated, this stabilized my hip. Doesn't mean this stopped. I still have rotation, but this is slowing down. So here we are at impact. Now, what's left? Because this has reached full range. Look at this lead arm. It's reached full range. What's left? What can I actually do? Well, I can straighten my trail arm and move my trail shoulder. See that? There is the release occurring. So here we go. Impact trail side release. Now, that, that's what you see in all good ball strikers, especially Mo. You see the, both arms get to a straight position. There's, there's impact, arm is bent. Right there, fully straight, both arms, right? And that's the right arm, right side extending. Now I'm gonna show you something here from this angle. Let me just get this out of the way so make it easier to see. Look at the club face when this occurs. I'm actually gonna put a ball down there. So I go to impact. Now watch as this club goes through, okay? It's, it, it can stay square for a period of time there because that's my body rotation without arm straightening. But then once the arm straightens, you'll see the blade starts getting extended and going over a little bit. And then you're gonna see the blade get back to the plane here. That's full extension of the trail arm. Now some people call that rolling. That's actually rolling. I don't want that. I don't want rolling. I want extension of the trail arm. And so Mo felt like the club wasn't rolling over in that position because the trail arm was extending. So let me do that from a face on perspective. I, and by the way, I always train with this trainer because kind of your subconscious here. If you keep training from proper ball position and proper stance position, 
your body starts learning your spatial relationships to things. So I'm always concerned about my spatial relationship. So I'm always training with the proper address. I always am. I, don't want, I want that to be perfect in my, in my golf swing at all times. So here we go again. So let's go back to this impact, right? Here we are at impact. And now my arm straightens. But it, remember, it's to stay square. And it can stay square for a, pretty, a period of time. See that? And look at that. That's body rotation. See, that's body rotation allows it to stay square. And then once the arm starts straightening, that club's going to look like it rolls over, even though it's just an extension of the arm. I'm not rolling the hand. I'm just extending the, the trail arm and the trail shoulder. And then from here, there's your, that's your release. And I'm going to go ahead and go into your finish for you here. I'm not going to change this. I'm going to keep rotating the trail shoulder and, and torso. And now I'm in my finish position. And you want to see the head. Watch the head position. You want the head to follow the shoulder. See how that, that my head moves with my shoulder when I turn? I do not want you keeping your head still. Once again, you've got to let the entire right side of your body release. See that? The right side of my body is releasing. I'm staying in my posture. So watch this again. And by the way, I'm teaching you the release side of the golf swing. To me, this is a critical side of the golf swing. Why is it so important? Because this is the braking system of the swing. And if you have not stabilized correctly, you will not learn to release the right side, the trail side, correctly. I'm not saying the golf swing is right-sided. I'm saying it's a left side stability and a right side acceleration. And so watch what happens here now. When I do that, I go into impact, trail arm is bent. I go into that extension down the line there. And then notice I'm still in my posture. I'm going to finish. My head goes forward, but no, I'm, I'm staying in my posture. I want you to go ahead and look sideways there, right? And then you can stand up. You've got to get all the way through the finish and the release plane, looking sideways before you stand up. That's why I want the trail foot on the ground. The trail foot, huge debate. It's probably one of the number one things I've seen on my channel since I launched the channel last year is people saying the trail foot shouldn't be on the ground. The trail foot is a stabilizer as well because it's limiting motion. I don't, it's, you're not stopping the hips. You're just only, only allowing them to go so far and it keeps the spine back. See how my spine is staying back when I do that? If I let the foot come up, I get extension. So this is a stabilizer and it's keeping the spine in position and spine is posture. And we'll get into that more on the channel later on. So today was a big day. We kind of finished off the swing. Let me do a quick summary and review of the last five or six videos that you've seen on the channel. We're trying to build you a 365 day a year swing, right? I want you to be able to step out there and play good whenever. That's number one. Number two is you have to master the, the swing in the right order. Address position, backswing, leverage, transition, impact, release, and finish. There's the order, right? We have to work on the address, then we gotta work on positions, then we gotta work on sequence, then we gotta work on repetition. That's how we work on the swing. All right. Now, I haven't covered sequencing yet too much, so keep, keep it, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I'm going to go into an in-depth review of timing and sequencing in the golf swing.